Today's notes, we're going to finish the day two notes. So we're just going to do this one page, and it's on synthetic division and the remainder theorem. So synthetic division is a shortcut. Okay, it's just simply a shortcut for polynomial division, which means dividing a polynomial by another polynomial. It can only be used if the divisor, okay, so your divisor is what you're dividing by, okay, so it's the denominator. So we take our polynomial and the divisor is in the denominator, okay? You can only use this shortcut if you're dividing by an x plus some number and x minus some number. So we can't do this if we had a 2x plus some number or 2x minus some number. It can only be used if the denominator is an x plus some number or an x minus. So in this case, we have a denominator or divisor of x minus 3, so we can use synthetic division. And how people set it up can be a little bit different. So um, I'm going to draw what looks like an L shape or part of a box. And to do synthetic division, we copy down the coefficients or the numbers up here in our polynomial that we're dividing. That's our top row. So if there's no number in front of an x squared, that number is a 1. So we put a 1 there, a 2 here, and then a negative 5. Okay, again, those are the three numbers, or the a, the b, and the c, in the polynomial form. And out front is going to be the opposite of this number. So if the factor is x minus 3, the number out front is going to be a 3. So how we do synthetic division is we bring down this 1, and we simply multiply this number by whatever is below in order. So 3 times 1 is 3, okay? And then we add this column straight down, so 2 plus 3 is 5, then 3 times 5 is 15. And then adding these two, we have a remainder of 10. So you gotta remember last class, I was using capital R for the remainder. So our remainder here is negative 10. Okay, so the way this works is we have two terms. So now these are the coefficients in our answer. Okay, so if we have a 1 and a 5, we have two terms. Two terms means a binomial. Okay, so if this is two terms, then that means we have a binomial answer. So we're going to have an x, so 1x in this case, 1x plus 5. And then if a remainder is 10, again, the remainder is part of a fraction. And since that's positive, we put the positive out front. And then the 10 over x minus 3. We just don't need to write the x plus, or the 1 rather. You don't need to write a coefficient of 1, so our answer can simply just be x plus 5 plus 10 over x minus 3. Okay, just to put it side by side, so this was a question that we divided by or did last class with long division. Okay, so here's the synthetic division on this side, and here's what we got when we did long division. You can see we end up with the same answer, but this way, again, is a shorter way. It's our shortcut. Okay, so I'll give 
I'll leave that on the screen for a minute so you can compare the two. So our remainder with synthetic division is this last number in the row. So let's go over to number two. In number two, we also, last class, we divided. Okay, and this is the same problem, but now we're going to do it with synthetic division. So we should get a remainder with this answer here, the trinomial x squared plus 2x plus 7. So again, we draw the L shape, or half of a rectangle, and we write down the coefficients of our polynomial that we're dividing. So it's 1, 7, 17, and 35. And since this is a positive 5, we're going to use the negative 5 out front for our multiplier. So remember, this number gets brought down, so that's a 1. So negative 5 times 1 is a negative 5. Then we add straight down, 7 plus a negative 5 is 2. Now 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Adding straight down, we get 7. And then negative 5 times 7 is a negative 35. Again, giving us a remainder of 0. We have three terms here. So that means we're going to have a trinomial answer. So this is going to be our x squared. So 1x squared or just x squared. That's a positive, so plus 2x plus 7. Again, let's put this to the left. If you want to compare the two methods, this was the long division for the same problem versus the synthetic. So much quicker and much shorter. And we have the same answer. So I'll give you a minute to compare those two. This should also be switched. All right. So let's, I know it's not uh, written in terms of a fraction. Okay, you can rewrite it if you want, but it's just the coefficients of the polynomial that we're dividing. So this is a 5, negative 17, negative 12. And then, since that's a negative 4, this is going to be a 4. So we always bring down the first numbers, so we have something to multiply by, and in this case, it's a 5. Okay, so 4 times 5 is 20. Adding these two, a negative 17 plus 20 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Adding, we get a remainder of zero. So the answer is two terms, so it must be a binomial. So here's our 5x plus 3. So again, a remainder of zero means that this is a factor of this. Okay, our next one. So let's write our 3, negative 8, negative 11, 1. And out front, that's a negative 2. It's going to be a 2. Bring down the 3. Now let's multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 8 plus 6. Um, or actually, who? What I just noticed about this one is that it doesn't go from high to low. So if it doesn't go from high to low, we have to add in that placeholder. Okay? 
So remember, this is the same as 3x to the fourth plus 0x cubed. We don't have a cube term. So that we should watch out for right at the very beginning, just like long division. You have to add in that placeholder. So it would be 3, 0, negative 8, negative 11, 1. We brought down the 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 0 plus 6 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12. Negative 8 plus 12 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 1 plus 8 is negative 3. And 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, giving us a remainder of negative 5. So we have 1, 2, 3. So if you want to work backwards, um, we have four terms. So our answer, well, we're going to have the negative 5 or minus 5 over x minus 2. So this is going to be the number. So we've got the negative 3. Then the x is going to go with this one, so 4x. The x squared will go with this one, and these are all positive, so plus 6x squared plus 3x cubed. So 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x minus 3. And I really should move this minus sign down there. 5 over x minus 2. All right, number 5, it says given p of x, so using function notation, p of x is the function x to the third minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. And it does go in order, like there's no, it wouldn't go from a cube to x to the first. Okay, so it does go from 3 and x to 3, 2 to 1, and then 0. And x plus 1 is a factor of p. So it is a factor. We need to find the other two factors of p. So this is a factor. We need to find the other two. Okay? So there's a couple of things you can do. We can do this using long division, but let's keep practicing the synthetic division to find the other two. So let's write down the coefficients. This is a 1, a negative 4, a 1, and a 6. Make that L shape. If this x plus 1 is a factor, then I put the negative 1 up front and bring down the 1. Now we multiply negative 1 times 1 is a negative 1. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Negative 1 times negative 5 is a positive 5. Add, you get 6. Negative 1 times 6 is a negative 6. Add, we get 0. So our remainder is 0, or we have no remainder. So what we get for an answer is the trinomial. Now if you want to go backwards, 6 is the number, and then the x term would go here, and then the x squared term. Okay, so this is the other factor, okay, that multiplies, but it says the other two, so this gives us a hint in that we need to factor this again. So there are two numbers that multiply to a positive 6 that add to a negative 5. So x and x, and those two factors, uh, signs have to be the same, they're going to be both negative, and it's 2 times 3. So negative 2 to, uh, times negative 3 is a positive 6, and negative 2 plus negative 3 is 5. So the other two factors, the answer, okay, would be x minus 2 and x minus 3. All right, our last page, which is the remainder theorem. Hmm, so what does this tell us? So this says when you divide some polynomial by a factor, you get a remainder r. So remainder can be 0, it can be some other number. 
So let's actually put an example up here. Okay, this is just coming from our notes. Uh, so from the very beginning, the very first question, um, this one. So we'll take this one. Okay, so when we took the polynomial x squared plus 2x minus 5, and we divided it by x minus 3, we got this answer. We had x plus 5 plus 10 over x minus 3. Okay. So when we divided, uh, here's our remainder. So the remainder, there's our R. The remainder theorem, or the remainder R, tells you the Y value when X is that number. Okay, so the Y value when X was that number. Okay, so with synthetic division, we're plugging in the negative three, so this is saying, uh, when we plug in, uh, so if I write that as a function, so and, let's say, for f of x, so we just look at the numerator for that. When we plugged in 3, we got the 10. Right here. When we think about using the 3, we got 10. And as a point, again, f of x, here's our x and there's the y. So as a point, that is 3, 10. If the root is 0, right, or if r equals 0, okay, then a, the x equals, is a 0 or root because we said it was a factor, divides evenly. If r equals zero, then, so if it's a root, then again, that's an x-intercept, a zero, and then we can say that's a factor. So let's explain this in more detail with the questions on the page. So it says, is x minus three a factor? Is it, okay, a factor of that? If it is a factor, so if yes, then, using the remainder theorem, the remainder is zero. So if it is a factor, then the remainder is zero. So we can find the remainder, okay, so we can do synthetic division, okay, so if we put a one here, negative seven, minus six, we could do long division, but synthetic is quicker. And then if that's minus three, we use three, bring down the one, three times one, three, and we get negative four, three times negative four is negative 12, seven X minus six, uh, we add, we get negative 18. Oh, I did, Oh, silly me again. It skips. It should also be working in pencil. It goes from x cubed x, so I have to put in that placeholder of zero. So one, zero, negative seven, negative six. Okay, we need to put in the placeholder. So now three times one, three, add three, three times three, nine, add you get two, three times two, six, remainder is zero. Okay, so the answer is silence my phone. The answer is yes, because our remainder is zero. So and it's also saying, too, that you could evaluate 
the function by plugging in this number. So another way to do this would be to plug in 3. So we do j of 3. So that would be 3 cubed minus 7 times 3 minus 6. And if we get 0, then it's a factor. So this is 27 minus 21 is 6. Um, 6 minus 6 is 0. Okay, so this is an even shorter way. Okay, so let's find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 3. Given that, this is the function. So again, this is the shorter way to do it. Okay, so find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 3. So we want to evaluate when x is 3. Okay, we're finding the remainder this time. So we're going to do f of 3. So 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 5. So 27, 3 squared is 9, 2 times 9 is 18, minus 12 plus 5, and this is 2. So find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 3, the remainder is 2. Okay, you could also do synthetic division. So if you wanted to double check your work, so copying down the numbers, is it in order? So I want to check first, yes. So 1, negative 2, negative 4, 5, and we're going to put the 3 out front. Bring the 1 down, 1 times 3, 3, negative 2 plus 3, 1, 3 times 1, 3, negative 4 plus 3, negative 1, 3 times negative 1, negative 3, uh, last number is a 2. Okay. Number three, find the remainder for that when we're dividing by x minus 1. Well, synthetic division does not make sense here because you don't want to go from 79 and add in all the zeros or placeholders to get to a 24th power and then to the end. So it just makes sense to evaluate or plug in 1. So 1 to the 79th power plus 3 times 1 to the 24th plus 5. So again, we're evaluating the function at 1. So then 1 to the 79th power is 1. 1 to the 24th power is 1 times 3 is 3 plus 5. So adding it all together, 4 plus 5, 9. So the remainder... is 9. All right, given that p of x is equal to x cubed plus kx squared minus 11x minus 6, if x minus 2 is a factor, so that means our remainder is 0. So that means when I plugged in p of 2, we got 0. Okay? So P of 2, so this is our end result. Our, and so as a point, this would be 2, 0. So this is the Y, this is the X. So that means when this is 0 and I'm plugging in 2 for the X's, leave K in there because we're solving for K. Let's find K. So 0, 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared 4 times k is 4k, minus 22, minus 6. So we end up with 8. Well, negative 22 minus 6 is negative 28, plus 8. Negative 28 plus 8 is a negative 20. So add the 20 over, we get 20 equals 4k. 
divide by 4 and 5 equals k. Okay, so today's Monday. I want to give you this week to practice our quiz. So this finishes day two. Our quiz on day two will be Friday. So that's the long division, synthetic division, and this remainder theorem.